lunge, try something mild like this, and just make sure you can swing and catch the landing of that gainer every time. I'll take a vertical spin off axis toward the horizontal plane where we want to be for slant gainer. Should look something like this is something that is actually a separate piece in the gainer progression. You may or may not actually need this slant gainer that will help us cross territory into full inversion along the lines of pseudo gainer and eventually true gainer flash. Turn your torso, push and catch, and go. And this transition has a sibling version called swing through, which is the one most people are interested in when they first start working on gainers. Follow along with me. So in other words, it's sort of a safety check for balance before you commit to your gainer. And go. Thereby making you very familiar with your current stage of gainer and unlocking the door to move forward in the progression. You start with something, a raise, that doesn't look or feel right. And then you go through this process to improve it until you're happy with your raise. Follow along with me as we see what that's all about. And over a few repetitions, your muscle memory should pick up on what you're trying to do here. A raise without the twist. It should look something like that. So those are two of the three skills that we need. The third one is actually gonna be for a secondary approach we'll take to learn the raise. But the catch is, if that's all you do, people will see it and say, oh, so you're doing an aerial. And if you want it to look like an invert raise, you need the important change. And putting those things together should help take your raise from looking like this to something more suitable like this. It's happening, but it's definitely not horizontal. How can I gain and keep that inversion? That's what this piece will cover. But specifically to swing through into gainer at some point, then here's where it gets good. Just as there are multiple forms of raise, each one can be modified to become a touchdown raise instead. So we'll start by setting you up with that control in section one to help you learn the touchdown raise safely and correctly. So let's talk about what that transition would look like as far as moving body weight onto the hand. And now is where we go from just a touchdown cartwheel to more of a touchdown raise. So we'll use the Gumby in section two to build a touchdown raise, but let's look at the other approach. So you can land it, you can catch right away, but it doesn't feel or look like the move we want. And that's where in section three, we'll sort of address both of those problems. We're starting to improve the timing such that the hand makes contact with the ground at the correct portion of the rotation of the skill. At this point, you may be asking, which is the best version of touchdown raise? You have to control your body weight and make sure it lines up with the rotation. Otherwise, even if you touch down, you might not hold onto a landing. Adjusting these variables can take your touchdown raise from something like this to something more correct like this. For now, that should be everything you need to get your touchdown raise in full swing.